That's inside information, isn't it? You mean like when a father tells a son about a court ruling on an airline? Welcome to Money Talks, the number one financial advice podcast. I'm Forrest Flacco, the greatest raider and trader of the 21st century. And tonight, I'm going to be showing you how to turn a profit while destroying troublesome unions and maximizing your potential by selling your new corporate investment for spare parts. This stream is brought to you by our sponsor, Full Seaman Energy. <laughs> Tonight we're going to be discussing one of the most inspirational films of all time, Oliver Stone's 1987 documentary, Wall Street. The 1980s were a banner decade for American corporate profits. As the great American policy platforms like the New Deal and the Great Society gave way to Reaganomics, deregulation and trickle-down economics, towards the end of the decade the race for profit that Ronald Reagan had unleashed met up with economic reality as it had with the 1929 Wall Street crash. First, in 1986, with the savings and loan crisis, a series of bank failures, and then in 1987, Black Monday, the stock market crash, a 22.3 fall of the Dow Jones in a single day stock market collapse. They're calling it the Monday Massacre, the worst drop in Wall Street history. I just came from inside and it looks like a madhouse. It's so crazy, you can't, nobody even expected it to be down this much. Hour after hour today, wave after wave of selling hit the stock market. Two months after that crash, Oliver Stone released Wall Street in what must have felt like the single most prescient movie release in history. When Oliver Stone and co-writer Stanley Weiser set out to pitch Wall Street, then called Greed, Oliver Stone knew almost nothing about the finance industry. In 1986, Oliver Stone was looking to follow up the success of Platoon, a highly personal movie about the Vietnam War, which existed in conversation with Francis Ford Coppola's Apocalypse Now. Wall Street was filmed in April to July 1987 for an expedited release by the end of the year. Oliver Stone and Stanley Weiser immersed themselves in Wall Street culture, meeting with stockbrokers, traders, investors, and spending time at brokerage houses. Oliver Stone's father, Lou Stone, who died in 1985, was a Wall Street broker. He had tried to raise Oliver Stone with Republican pro-business values, and his support for the Vietnam War was part of Oliver Stone's mindset when he decided to join the military. He was very disappointed in his son's decision to become a filmmaker, and his death, and the fact that he believed there had never been an intelligent business movie, spurred Oliver Stone to want to make one about Wall Street after his death. I guess I never told you. I love you, Dad. I love you so much. <laughs> I'm sorry for the things I said. As Oliver Stone and Stanley Weiser descended on Wall Street, it was the wake of several high-profile insider trading scandals. Everyone was making money, and many people, including Stone's friend Owen Morrissey, had gotten too reckless with their ideas about insider trading. If you're not inside, you are outside, okay? And I'm not talking about some $400,000 a year working Wall Street stiff, flying first class and being comfortable. I'm talking about liquid. So these scandals formed a chronological basis for the fictional film. Wall Street stars Charlie Sheen as the hungry and naive Bud Fox. Sheen had just starred in Platoon, and Stone allowed him to pick either Jack Lemmon or Martin Sheen to play his father. Sheen opted to work with his father. Opposite Charlie Sheen, after Warren Beatty and Richard Gere passed, is Michael Douglas as the psychopathic villain Gordon Gecko. Michael Douglas, our listeners might remember, was not seen as an A-list commodity he'd soon become. He was just coming off of Romancing the Stone, and had only starred in TV shows before that. Wall Street gave him the chance to play one of the greatest villain roles of all time. The richest 1% of this country owns half our country's wealth, five trillion dollars. One third of that comes from hard work, two thirds comes from an inheritance, interest on interest accumulating to widows and idiot sons, and what I do. Daryl Hannah plays Bud's girlfriend, Darian, Hal Holbrook, John C. McGinley, who was also just a platoon, and James Karen are all Bud's co-workers at Jackson Steinem. James Spader is Bud's college roommate, and Terrence Stamp is Sir Larry Wildman, Gordon Gecko's arch nemesis. Larry Wildman is based off the famed corporate raider, Sir James Goldsmith. Gordon Gecko is based off of many people, but especially Michael Milken, who had invented high yield bonds and got barred by the SEC for insider trading. Also, Ivan Boski, who was swept up in a similar insider trading case. Martin Sheen as Carl Fox represents the working class being decimated under Reaganomics. His airline company, union representative character, goes head-to-head -head with Gordon Gecko's embodiment of 1980s greed and excess. 
The Battle for the Soul of Bud Fox. He's got your prick in his back pocket, but you're too blind to see it. No. What I see is a jealous old machinist who can't stand the fact that his son's become more successful than he has. The Battle for the Soul of Bud Fox, a quintessential naive and hungry yuppie stand-in. Bud's girlfriend and love interest, Darian Taylor, has already sold her soul to Gordon Gecko on a different side. She represents the art world, where capital purchases art, but desire rather than more tangible factors controls the price. This painting here, I bought it 10 years ago for $60,000. I could sell it today for six hundred. dollars The illusion? has become real, and the more real it becomes, the more desperate they want it. This is directly compared to Gordon Gecko's business, which makes nothing, manufactures nothing, and in fact actually demolishes the businesses that do make and manufacture, all in the service of making money. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, that greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence. The central declaration of the villainous Gordon Gecko is that greed is good, and that greed helps propel an ever-evolving market and financial system, despite Gecko's actual role decimating every company he encounters. It continues to resonate as American capitalism goes through superficial changes, but in the wake of the neoliberal revolution, never loses sight of potential profit maximization. Like it or not, we're all still living in Gordon Gecko's world many times over. Now, you're not naive enough to think we're living in a democracy, are you, buddy? It's the free market. And you're part of it. Yeah. You got that killer instinct. 